Boa tarde. Good afternoon, everyone. We will start now this roundtable on I have the wrong paper here, but no problem. Ceremonial and social meaning of food served in ethnic spiritual cults. It's very important that this um, racial equality coordinating office is promoting this round table in this eighth um, Milan Pact Forum so that we can highlight the importance of this uh, African originated um, religions. We have more than one million captive um, black people from uh, um, disembarking in the Valongo uh, port, and they were spread all over Brazil. And with them, all the traditions of the Zé, Giban, Keto, Fon. They were mixed and structured, and it originated the Brazilian candomblé. And we had this uh, African matrix uh, religions. We had the traditional uh, Tejero people, or people from this African uh, origin. We have to discuss and shed some light on the food uh, served in these ethnic spiritual cults. I would like to thank the presence of all of you. We are here in person and also some people following us online. And I'd like to invite to this round table Prof Professor Scott William from the Federal University of Rio de Janeiro in the Geography Department. I also would like to invite Babazinho, Professor Rodrigo Carneiro, Director of the Institute Sustainable Tejero, and Kleber de Bessen, Director of the Anbe Cultural Center. Yalorixá Margaret Labanca of Oshun. She is the head of the Ileaxé Omebain. So from now on, we'll start this very special panel, especially for the city of Rio de Janeiro. Please, let's start by Professor Scott. You may take your seat, please, all of you. I thank Leonardo very much for the invitation to have this brief contextualization philosophical and scientific contextualization of this session, highlighting its intellectual importance, seen from the relational, relational social psychology point of view. That way? The green one, okay. Well, myself and almost everyone that went to school, you have been indoctrinated with this scientific uh, vision of the world, very conventional, that does not dialogue with the session. Why? Because it is a bifurcated vision that will this place in space, sorry, I have to go back here one slide. I can move the slides forward and backwards. Let's see. One more, back, 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 back. There, there we are. One more. OK. We have this bifurcation, a separation between society nature, and even more important for this in 
for this panel here, it separates this natural domain from the supernatural domain. And the classical, classic science will, this, uh, despite any supernatural phenomenon, it is uh, something that, by, uh, that theologists will do, or like an anthropologist like myself or sociologist, that will study people in this way. But for this type of uh, vision of the world, this session will have no importance at all. I want to reach a vision, a way of preached by Latour that will establish this dialogue. One of the presentation has to do with sustainable development. Several quilombos, they are in conflict with conservation units. So this second separation also, we'll talk about that and how to face this threat. Next. Going a little bit further back, last five years, this is a second vision that is very hostile regarding the content of our session here today. Why? Because what was done is that we have this disenchantment of nature, anyone, and we sent the uh, other world to a much more distant place. So anyone that says that they speak to the spirits of the forest, they are demonized. It's something evil for this type of vision. So we will not look for understanding according to this vision, but it helps a lot to understand why there is this hostility between the Pentecostals because for them and most of the so-called universal um, religions, the other world was sent to space this place and it's really far away and not close to us. And you only will get to know the other world when you die. So it's this place in time. This vision will not be very sympathetic to our vision. It's important to understand the criticism to our uh, vision. And a classic anthropological vision of animist uh, vision of the world and vitalists as well, this one will be more in favor of our vision. Why? Because for most of the populations in the world, the other world, the spiritual world, is close to us. It's like another adjacent dimension, very close to us, and there is contact between them. It's not this place in space and time. And at the same time, we also have this communion with the spirits of the forest. So this nature is not as enchanted as the major religions preach. So we can dialogue, we can establish a dialogue with this Afro-Brazilian knowledge. But I'm really concerned that sometimes it can be isolated and stuck to a, a, an idealized translation of the past. I don't know if we can look forward with this vision. And the other two visions, they will say, well, this is another past, it's different. This was the very beginning of the human being's existence. But we can understand this, several environmental relationships, ceremonial relationships, and other things to explain. But in itself, this is not enough. Next. In the last 20 years, we have seen the growth of this relational perspective, several sectors of social sciences that can expand and have this dialogue, establish this dialogue with other uh, visions of the world that is not the one that is dominating in science, including human actors, non-human actors, then we can talk about that. This socio-ecological vision, a relational vision, will have this comparison or this will break the separation of uh, nature um, 
and humanity and natural and super, supernatural, those that consider the religious uh, phenomena as metaphysical, they are all social ecological, they cannot be separated. So in uh, all the space here, you have sustainable use and not only a conservation unit, a fully integrated, sorry, a fully conservation unit from which human is removed. What I've been showing you is this type of conservation unit separates part of nature, in quotes, so that it can develop better in a predatory manner the human space, either rural or urban space. Here we're saying that no, you will have, let's say, I'm going to show some images here, what will be a socio-ecological conservation with human beings present, or at least some human beings, not as we have now that the only homeo being that we have will be urban tourists and not the local population that usually is expelled so that you can clean the nature for the rich ecotourists to visit. How can you break the separation between society and nature? Instead of talking about social society and nature, you talk about 14 um, existence modes. We have four in common with other non-human beings in all societies. They do it in a different way. That's why we can bring together or can unite areas so-called natural and so-called human. So in the metaphysical side, we have two modes, and uh, we're talking about, I'm going to talk about that in a while, that they are re re extremely relevant for this session, metamorphosis and religion. Okay, metamorphosis. I will read that. It involves deities of possession that they bring cure therapy to people in crisis, leading them to mutation, and it includes spirits, extraordinary creatures, temporary transfigurations of humans into hybrid beings, they will intermediate the interface between humans and non-humans. So possession that will bring a cure. Something else that will be re really relevant to our session will be religion. So we have the gods that they convert, they save, they unite, group of people in crisis, promising plenitude uh, with the end of times, and through religion people will have access to people here and now, and they will not, you know, uh, be with God in the very distant future. That's not the case. So we have two ways or two existence modes related to this physical and metaphysical. Um, everything is social ecological here. So it overcomes that bifurcated religious view and the scientific bifurcated view, view as well, vision as well. Regarding conservation, why ethnic territories are so important, ethnic territories are so important here in the country, because those that are of sustainable use, they are concentrated in the Amazon region. The rest of the country remains biocentric in terms of ethics. You only take into account the ecosystem. You, you only take into account the ecosystem. You eliminate any human being there is in the system. So this is the problem here. And we have some private reserves, they should be sustainable, but they have the same biocentric speech. So you have to go to the state park, Pedra Branca, you have to see that on top of the aqueducts that's in, in, in the top of the local communities, you have the biologists and 
environmental engineers, they do everything so that these historical people, they should be expelled, they should leave the place. So we have strategies to resist to that. We have three strategies related to uh, sustainable conservation, and one uh, related to the ethnic of territory in the whole chain uh, once you reach this uh, conservation unit, sustainable conservation unit that in the legislation should be complied with and also of a whole use, we should respect the historical population in the places. They say that there's no population, they just spell them, you know, they just grab the land and that's it. So what do you do? I'm talking about a, an international real literature on this topic, and I'll be ra The thing is, uh, people should resist to be expelled. They have to act as uh, they have acted all along. So they have to disobey. This is civil disobedience. Um, and sometimes we will be able to avoid conflict. And of course, number two, you should be able to try to change the mentality uh, of uh, managers, of regional managers, from uh, a biocentrical uh, way of thinking to uh, the thinking uh, directed to uh, social ecological conservation. And number three, there should be the promotion, there should exist the promotion of sustainable activities, uh, agroforestry systems, timber and non-timber related activities, community-based uh, tourism and agroforestry systems. This could take uh, decades and should be applied to the Amazon region because we have there a huge population of uh, indigenous people, uh, black communities, and also uh, poor peasants. So how can we overcome prejudices from um, biocentrical um, city hall, for instance, managers or local managers. There are two problems f that they face. Managers are from the middle class, and people that reside there are rural people. So they're not seen as people that can conservate f the forest. On, uh, on the contrary, what we know is that uh, um, urban uh, people tend to um, use land and forest in a uh, in a uh, bad way so number 4 we should go after the existence of ethnic territories they shouldn't be administered or managed by um uh, environmental institutions they should be uh, managed by their own people so that's why we see so uh, many um, traditional peoples going after their rights because they're, because they're being menaced by the agribusiness, which is subsidized, the urban expansion upon their territories. So these peoples are being pressed between um, places that are already uh, uh, preserved and places that are being uh, um, invaded by uh, urban, by the urban sprawl, so to speak. So it would be important to have a scientific uh, discourse that is inclusive and it is important to pass on to these people that academia has to be inclusive, has to understand how things work in traditional communities. This is a picture from Petropolis. We had uh, forest regeneration um, at the slope and also the planting of organic food in the uh, plateau place. So 
what I would like to say is that you sh we should find some middle way between human action and pure conservation, because if we don't do that, we uh, we perpetuate prejudices, racial uh, and climate prejudices. I am an academic. I'm I'm sorry if I talk too much, but I'm very glad to have been here today with you. Thank you very much, Professor Scott, uh, for being here. I will read out your uh, bio. He's uh, he is a uh, associate professor at, uh, at the geogra geography department and has a PhD in um, geography from um, a from a university from the United States and has been uh, doing research in many regions in Brazil in this um, area of eth ethical and ethnical justice. Thank you so much for being here in the session today. It is very important for us to have you here. It is very important to um, mainstream the discussion that there have to be ethnical uh, territories for ethnical and for traditional communities in Rio and in Brazil. Now, Yalorixá, I'm sorry, Babazinho. Oh, we will give the floor first to our uh, most senior member of the session, Margarete Labanca de Oshun, has been um, uh, directing Yashombi Bain for 46 years now and has, doing, has been doing social work there and works also in the realm of health and is one of the founders of Zoafro and which uh, stands for religion, religious liberty, and works uh, also at the religious space of Pedra de Xangu. Well, I've been presenting Aure to everyone, a blessing to everyone. What do I have to say here after this uh, very Interest, interesting presentation. It would have been Babazinho. Very interesting to have you speaking before me. But I would like to say uh, that uh, what I have to say here comes from the perspective of a woman, of a kitchen, of a worship uh, place. The role of women, of Yaba, is very important. M women are managers of life, are natural managers of life. Women are very proud of this. Women um, uh, give birth to children and they feed their children through their breasts. And this is the beginning of life for everyone. So this uh, is a testimonial of the importance of women in feeding humanity. And it's very important to, uh, to have sustainability in our worship places in Candomblé. All yabas are very important. They have a very important role. Um, women are uh, or women are, uh, uh, they have a, a contact to uh, deities because they have, for instance, timber uh, utensils that are very important for feeding. And they have a very spiritual role in feeding and in sustaining uh, people. So we, women, hold and sustain our households and houses from the beginning. I could, of course, talk about agriculture of hunters, but I would like to stress that kitchens are important. Kitchens are our place, the place where we prepare our food. And it is very important to stress that we prepare a food on the basis of 
white corn. This is our main um, a product. We produce munguza, ibo, iboya, and all yabas prepare ojumu, and they prepare their uh, food recipes on the basis of white corn. White corn is a all-encompassing food and very important for the yabas. I can also speak of dende. It is a very important oil that is used by all yabas. And the use of this oil of dende is so important that can gather together around the a food called akarajé and people smell the scent of dende oil and this is also very important for our culture w in our kitchens men are a welcome we are a matriarchal religion but men have the power and are also invited to the kitchen but there is no place in our kitchen, a you know, specific place for babashe or yabashes. There is no defined place for men. The power of the wooden utensils are our power of the women. We are very important also in the realm of the religion, um, candomblé, cow pee is something that we you used to prepare a uh, bolinho de ensan, acara. And this brings also a very important and very distinctive scent to our place. Yansan, our div divinity, is everywhere and can be felt in our kitchens. Yansan is, this divinity is present in the bolinho de Yansan, and you can f feel the scent of um, of the cowpea uh, once you taste this, um, this type of food. People go to Yokum to ask for, for love, for health, so that our daily bread will be given to us. Uh, Oshun is the core of our kitchens. It's one of the main ladies, and Oshun does not leave its children with hunger or hungry. So we, s we feel in our religion its care for us. If it wouldn't be for the care, and love from Olorisha around its own worship place, we would be in a very uh, um, bad situation because we live in a very unequal society. The economy is unequal. So we can feed our people with everything that we bring to our kitchens and that is blessed b uh, by our deities. This is what I can tell you. I could, of course, go on and on and talk to you about our kitchen, but of course, I would talk about uh, cooking. If, if I would talk about ex ex explicitly about Yaba, I would talk about all of all divinities that come together but I would like to uh, stress the role of women a women that um, is taking care of the kitchen while everyone else is dancing and doing uh, religious uh, rituals sometimes this person this woman feels rejected by their worse by uh, people that are worshiping but i have to tell you women keep society alive women in the kitchen keep men standing in our worship places um, women are the first 
feeding source for their humanity. So we owe respect to women in their sacred role. We know, of course, that our uh, hunters and builders have been, and planters, settlers have been very important. But when they come to our door, when they come to our home, we women um, manipulate herbs, manipulate me uh, medicinal plants. We are the ones that have this power. So the power of women in candomblé houses, in worshiping houses, they have to do with the wooden spoons that we have in our hands. Why are people standing? Why are we still alive? Because why are people still working? Why are our men still worshiping? Because they have been fed, not only f by those that have gone to hunt uh, for food, but people and women that have uh, valued um, uh, food products, such as white corn, as I said. White corn is a very important ingredient for many meals that we do. and. The capacity to think of uh, recipes and menus, uh, this is a capacity that is uh, something that women have. If you ask a man to prepare three different meals with white corn, you will know that uh, only women can do that. Be these recipes salty or sweet, you for instance, akasa. Uh, these are all recipes that will be best prepared by women. There is an intrinsic value of a wooden spoon, of a uterus, of breasts, of women that have their role in sustainability. So we owe everything I've mentioned to women that hold wi wooden spoons in their hand that can prepare many dishes with white corn and they can create upon these dishes. And without these dishes, we, we wouldn't be able to feed our religious uh, rituals. Akasa, for instance. Akasa is fundamental and obojo shala. So, what I would like to say is that blessed be the one that has a wooden spoon in their hand. Blessed be, uh, blessed are all women to in in uh, while representing deities, while representing uh, goddesses. You cannot talk about sustainability if you won't remember and hail and worship uh, our uh, big lady, the great Abba. The great Abba, I'm not referring to myself. I am saying, I'm speaking of our great Yabba. I'm the daughter of Yabin, my mother, my greatest mother. May our great mother bless everyone here. Os olhos ficam marejados, né? Well, we are really moved, touched after such a speech. It's important that you talked about acarajé. These uh, cakes are so typical in the whole country, in Bahia, in Rio de Janeiro as well. So thank you very much. And now I would like to invite Professor Babazinho Rodrigo Carneiro, Professor of Biology in the Secretary of State Education uh, here in is a master's in environment and society by the University of the State of Rio de Janeiro. And he's an expert in ethical racial education by the rural Federal University of Rio de Janeiro. And he's also uh, in the Obatala uh, worship place. One of the priests there. First of all, I would like to ask for your blessing to Margaret, to Baba Kleber, to all those present here. Traditional uh, salutes to Ayure, Mutumba, Uyuru. It's very important when we talk about uh, 
African origin people, we are talking about uh, diversity, and I'll talk a little bit about the academia. It was really important to have you, the uh, uh, oldest one here. You are a black woman representing our ancestors, and I'll make this connection. Some of the academia together with our traditional knowledges. So I'll talk a little bit about the um, food knowledge, the popular food knowledge, how they have been preserved in our traditional um, worship places called tejeros. So uh, the people, the place where I spoke from, my Baba Lurisha, my biologist, uh, since six years old, I participate in this um, African matrix uh, community. She brought this African indigenous uh, community. She uh, w had an indigenous background, and then she converted to um, African religion. So from that point, I had this appeal, special appeal from the members in these uh, African religions, they wanted to continue the environmental work that I perform. And we got together in several meetings. Uh, we had 270 traditional uh, units in the whole uh, country to discuss the 17 goals, sustainable development goals. And we have reached the conclusion that we can move forward here in the slides. Those goals, they were not um, reflecting our cosmovision. Many times we are characterized only as religi religious people. And that's not only that. This religious aspect was just a way that the colonizer had to take from us all the traditional knowledge that we had before. And this knowledge was preserved in the traditional territorial units. But what we needed is what that Odessi means to me. If I don't understand, if what d does the um, sustainable development goals mean to me? I want to reach the most vulnerable people. So how can we do that? some of the work that has been done. I'm showing it to you here. I'll talk a little bit about them, uh, relating them to our sacred um, dishes that had been brilliantly explained here. For us to understand this cosmovision, how can we understand all of that? We understand planet Earth. We, in our society, Eurocentric society, a society where the knowledge, only the knowledge of the white people is taken into account, we call it Earth. But for the African matrix peoples, they call it this big body, Onile, Aiza, Gaia, and we salute that. We praise that in our traditions. We sing as follows. So the knowledge in our traditions, it's conveyed through oral tradition. Now we write, but before we sang. So this oral communication was preserved to the uh, songs and also through the drums, beats. And when I sing that, I'm telling that people that is listening that this, the, the earth, this body that we have is the most important thing that we have to preserve and we have to salute all our, in all our traditions, we have to salute the earth. We have to revere to the importance of this great body and it's important it is a deity everything that is important to our people we change that into something sacred a deity whenever it's sacred is divine so i bring the first uh, development goal eradication of poverty and for us 
the people from African origin, we don't know poverty because we have Oshasi. Those that eat from the sacred uh, food will never be poor. So our cosmovision is different. Those that eat from Oshosho or Ashosho will know um, abundance and they know that we have to uh, plant every day so that we can harvest tomorrow. The second uh, development goal, when we talk the zero hunger, it represents Oba, the great lady holding the wooden spoon, and like other Yabas, those that cook not only for herself, but to sustain and feed the whole community. So it's not an individual thought. It's not uh, thinking about food to myself, to Rodrigo, but to feed the whole community. So we plant and we believe in prosperity. Because if I have it, my whole village, my whole tejero will eat. This is my sacred place, my worship place, the tejero. And this is where I will convey knowledge. This is a food sovereignty place. And it is in this place that I will preserve my traditions. So Orisha Oba is the great lady of the kitchen. I bring abara. It's one of the traditional dishes based in different uh, bean and then the oil. We see also the leaf here wrapping the abara. It is done and prepared by the ladies, by those that hold the knowledge, the traditional knowledge. Then this is the third uh, sustainable goal, that health and well-being. Well, eating popcorn, taking a popcorn bath, this is much more than a ritual. For us, our ancestors, they knew what science says popcorn is antioxidant. And it is our ancestors, they had this knowledge. Those that eat popcorn, that you need health to preserve ourselves. So this traditional knowledge is conveyed through food as well. Food is the vehicle of this tradition and is the vehicle of this science, scientific knowledge. Regardless of the fact that science uh, treats our knowledge as pseudoscience, and it's not, we use all this food to preserve our tradition and our body. There's something sacred. OK, quality education. This is the sustainable development goal. Now, now we have the ancestors' knowledge, or it's not a diploma that will make a master, a professor. We know that traditional uh, experience it's, will help to convey the knowledge. When we have an efo, which is a dish prepared with leaves, and we tell the story of this, uh, dish. We are working on education, a non-racist education, an education that will work with uh, costumes and with um, environmental education. ODS, I'm oh, sorry, the Sustainable Development Goal 6 is the drinkable water. We have Abao Shun, the great lady of the waters. We have a river in the African continent in Nigeria that we say that it is a sacred uh, river of this great Yaba. When I say Yaba, I'm talking about this lady that goes to the river, that will revere the water, and will respect the ecosystem and that natural worship space. Uh, the academia we call ecosystem, we call that Iba, Ota, Oshun. For us, Oshun is not a goddess, it's not a deity, it's the river. Ri the river is Oshun. And this is what we have to understand. So and when we bring the Omolokun, uh, this um, dish, 
it's water and with, with water life starts we have the egg the egg representing this um, be the beginning of life and how important this dish is and it uh, recollects the ancestrality our ancestrality when we eat this traditional dish we remember all the enslaved people enslaved black people that came here and had no choice but they were able to bring to us knowledge science and territory and education the sustainable development goal number seven we'll talk about renewable and clean energy we have a lot of energy in the Oya deity. It is movement itself. It is the lightning, is it the fire. So when we talk about clean energy, the traditional population many times will not understand what is that. For them, they don't understand what is clean energy and what is not. But when I speak about clean energy, saying that it is Oya, it is the movement, it is the air in movement it is the wind the hurricane the thunder the fire i can relate to this fire ball or this fire cake which is a carajé it represents the clean energy it is the food that represents the clean energy i want to realize that all dishes they have a story it is ancestral ancestral um, knowledge when we look at these uh, religions we don't should not only think about religion but uh, the religious aspect was something that we have used to convey this um, very traditional knowledge. We here talking about decent work and economic growth. So we need Eshu. Eshu is the universe dynamic, moving everything. All movement belongs to Eshu. And there's no way uh, of talking about Eshu and not talk about Pade. We have the hot pepper and everything remind us of uh, Eshu, when you eat pepper, you feel the heat. And this is Eshu, not the devil. The devil is another culture, is something different that works in this sense to uh, treat as something minor, something lesser. So where you have some people that will kill a bird today with the stone that they have used yesterday. So understanding Pade is understanding Eshu's dynamic. Industry, innovation, and infrastructure. This is Ogun. Ogun is someone, the, the lord of agriculture that works a lot in Brazil. He becomes the, the warrior, the uh, champion that with Oxóssi, they bring food home. They are the lord of the work. And I have one of the um, dishes that we offer in our worship places to Ogun so that we can be a little bit Ogun that we could have some of the strength, a little bit of the strength and the knowledge. Those that uh, praise Ogun, that have him as uh, an inspiration, as an idol, they have this value of work. They can, it can handle the tools properly and effectively. Reduction of inequalities, we understand inequalities for us, they don't exist. Everything to the religious, to, to the African religions, to the uh, people from uh, African um, origins, everything is dual. If you have the man, you have the woman. If you have the younger, you have the older. If you have fire, you have water. Everything is continuous and circular. So the balance here is the f uh, representing Ogun Ede. Sometimes it's seen as a man, sometimes it's seen as a woman. It, he, she works in this dual manner, and we have presented here lily, which is a dish that is salty from corn, but it's also sweet. We can make so from something salty, something sweet. So it brings together salt and sugar, and it's very nice, very tasty. For those that don't know, you can try lily. 
This one, the Sustainable Development 11, they're talking about cities and communities that sh could should be sustainable. There's no better example of sustainable cities and communities. Shango, Shango is the great lord that has expanded its territory, and all the territories through which Shango passed through. Um, he took knowledge, tradition, and governability. So I bring here Shango as the great king, but it's the king that looks after its, his people that will govern the reign so that everyone is respected. If I am talking about natural elements and sustainable traditions, I'm talking about Amala the one that eats uh, and will get no, um, uh, will not never be bewitched. And when we eat um, this amala, we're bringing shango uh, through this traditional knowledge. The 12th uh, sustainable development goal, we talk about responsible consumption and production. We have Osani as the great lord of the forest. It's the Orisha that has all the knowledge and holds the traditional knowledge on plants. Osanya is the plant itself, is the photosynthesis, is the one that will change light into food. So when I'm talking about photosynthesis, I'm talking about Osanya. Osanya is for for us is that is the traditional knowledge of a sign I can learn how to manage uh, the leaf how important that leaf is if it is a uh, medicine or not who can use it who cannot who can, this knowledge is preserved in the traditional territorial units and also abere uh, this is the dish uh, wrapped in this leaf that will be used as food for us as well. So action against the global climate change. We bring Iroko Orisha for the Pancho people in Angola. It is the time Orisha is the lord of the, the climate that will govern the different um, annual um, seasons. And we'll understand that each leaf, each animal will have its time, will have a better moon for this and that. It will have, you have the time to plant, the time to harvest. And this understanding starts with uh, Iroko and time knowledge. So we bring the pumpkin abobra as uh, the dish that will represent this ancestral knowledge will be also um, served as sweet something sweet will also be a recipe or sorry um, a container sometimes and very useful to our ancestral knowledge here uh, the 14th sustainable development goal we have to protect marine life so anyone in our African uh, origin religions, they think about Odoya immediately when you talk about the marine life, because for us, the sea is Yemanja. It's not only the lady of the waters, it is the sea itself, the ocean. It represents Yemanja, it is Yemanja. So all the food that comes from the sea, this great mother that feeds our humanity, that brings work to us, we bring that with the eboya. It's also uh, made from uh, corn in a way, and it feeds a lot the people in the worship places. And it reminds us of one of the largest uh, um, feasts that we have in the country and in the planet, in fact. Um, SDG 15 talks about life on Earth. And as I talked to you, life on Earth, well, Earth is a divinity, it is a big uterus. 
out of which every lives every life comes. So uh, land, earth is very important. This is where life is is grown. This is a job for Onile, for our Mother Earth. And traditional communities know that and have been passing this on through our traditions. So all the roots uh, are represented by Onile, uh, such as um, beets and carrots. STG 16. Um, Peace, justice, and if, uh, efficient institutions. Oshala is a divinity which represents that, the father of all Orishas. Obatala, Oshala, Orisha. He is uh, righteous and important. And so that we will have peace and can be fed, we have to be under the blessing of Oshala. Uh, he is happy when all his children have something to eat. So when we eat, we're praising Obatala, Oshala. When we eat Akasa, we're bringing peace to our body. He is the Lord of peace. So beyond being nutritious, this uh, a food is very symbolic because it brings to us ancestry and traditional knowledge. People of African descent, when they eat Akasa, they ha are sure that they will be f uh, fed with peace. And SDG number 17 that speaks of uh, partnerships and implementation means we understand that this is possible through the action of Shiri, the feast and the uh, feast of Orishas. This is the end of the educational process within our traditional communities. And this is where we bring to our communities all the knowledge that we have gathered. Uh, the Ao, the secret, is brought to our communities. It is the main uh, f uh, uh, feast that we have, the main Ebo. This is where um, knowledges are shared um, in the Festa do Olobaje. This is a feeding uh, celebration. We um, praise all divinities. It happens once a year so that in the next year we will have health, peace, energy, and we'll have a long life and prosperity. So all of these uh, dishes that represent symbolic values, they are present in Olubaje. And to come to a close, I would like to say about uh, something about f the function potma. This is a form that uh, dialogues with this event right now. It is a form for um, uh, food security and nutritional security for traditional people of African descent. I am the coordinator of political articulation of this forum here in Rio de Janeiro. And I work within this forum and what we try to do is to is bring forward some pillars to decolonize the being, knowing, and acting. We understand that if we decolonize and value ancestral knowledge, if we preserve knowledge that is being shared in worship places such as Tejeros, if people understand that, uh, we, they will be against racism, they will be sustainable, they will work in a solid, uh, solidary way, and they will be able to generate a contribution to equity. So we have many campaigns, and we work these pillars within our forum. One of the main pillars is um, tradition feeds one and is not violent. We, of course, uh, kill um, um, uh, animal animals to in our rituals, but they are not done in a cru uh, uh, cruel way. Uh, those animals are 
uh, used uh, for the nutrition, ege, it's blood, and the feathers are also used. So it is important that people understand this world vision and uh, so that they will act in an anti-racist way. We have another campaign which is called uh, Sacred Water Women and we in this campaign we have a gender-based uh, uh, approach to um, water and food and it's important that people understand the power of women to respect women as a sacred entity. You cannot uh, turn unholy something that has been considered holy. So we value women and thus we if we value women, we com uh, we combat and fight um, f um, feminicide and other types of uh, social inequality. And we have also the campaign of Sindhi Sul. It is a com community bank to foster our traditions. Here is our body, the body of this forum, its participants. Participants, we have Abbas. We have uh, elders and youngers. Uh, the youth it has the responsibility to take this uh, knowledge along. Everyone is very important in this forum. We try to dialogue on the basis of our traditionalities, on the basis of a Afrocentric view, decolonized view. We try to get in touch with the a uh, public hand so that we are viewed and understood and also part of public policies. Before I come to an end, I would like to thank ACP uh, to this uh, about this uh, um, about the knowledge that I brought to you. We're trying to uh, pr uh, uh, to develop a booklet to um, uh, express how we see SDGs. So I would like to thank Sibi and Leonardo, the City Hall of Rio de Janeiro. They have been opening spaces for us and supporting us in our traditional rituals. Thank you all very much for listening to me and I hope you enjoy the session. Thank you so much. A gente aqui agradece, Babazinho. Thank you so much, Babazinho, for your talk. Ana Patricia is here, Aladia. Um, thank you very much for being here. And thank you to all coordinators so that uh, Tejero people will be more valued and will be more understood. Thank you so much. Now I would like to give the floor, last but not least, um, to the priest of Jesus Marie. And uh, defends also the religion Ifa, director of Ampe Humpami, and acts in the defense of traditional rights and develops also um, social assistance uh, related to family, agriculture, and also in rural areas. Please, priest, you have the floor. Thank you very much. I would like to. Pay reverence to to Yah, the only women on this panel. And I have to say that women are very important because we come from the uterus of women. So I would like to greet all women, all women that are listening to us. Thank you f so much for giving us life, to for giving us food, for feeding us, and uh, for uh, for being the, resp the people responsible to perpetuate life. I would like to greet the ori of everyone here. My talk here is a reverence to everything that has been said because I would like to talk about um, food suppliers, how uh, this cycle comes to being. So I would like to reverence o Ori. Ori is our ancestral register that um, give sense to our life here in on Earth. 
Ori is the revelator through uh, Opele games, Obiuru, Bu, and all other forms of um, of um, magic. Ori tells us what we need to eat to keep on working and living our spiritual life, which has a direct and indirect uh, influence upon our uh, earthly life. Ori is responsible for our choices, um, be they direct choices or not. So I would like to start my talk by saying that there are Orishas and they are the great the great warriors and hunters they go out for instance ogun ogun builds the tools for the land to be arable ogun is the great warrior that gives us the possibility so that ode can go out and hunt so that oko can can take all the food project take all the food and seeds that they can grow and strive and live we have an orisha which is named age osan he gives us the leaves and gives us the conditions for us to um, work our energy through baths, for instance, so that we will have a balanced life to align our chakras and so that we can be here standing and facing all the difficulties in our path. There is also our great war warrior, Shangu. Shangu is the one that helps us to face the battle to conquer territories in our lives. Shango is responsible for everything that we conquer on our daily life. He gives us strength so that we can face our challenges and overcome them, so that we can find our right and so that we can achieve victory. So the works of Ogun, Oche, Ade, all these works that have to do with land preparation, harvesting, this ends up in the kitchen. And we heard that from Yamagaret when she talks about the wooden spoon and, from Yaba and about Yabas and Yabas that are responsible for preparing food. I would like to stress that and say that they are responsible for joy. Every one of us, when we're fed, we feel joy. We're joyful. When we are fed, we feel good. We feel um, loved. Food is res is a an integral integral part of uh, celebrations of um, rituals. Everywhere in every celebration, we will find food, and that's why we pay reverence to women because women are the responsible for cooking food. When we go out of the realm of the kitchen. Well, we, what do we see? We see other places. We see the places uh, from which we um, take food, for instance, the markets. In the markets, um, the responsible for circulation of food in the markets is a shoe. A shoe turns possible that you uh, spend the money, that money has a sense in the life of people, and that we can, uh, that we end up doing much with the little uh, money that we have, uh, so that we can uh, buy appropriate food to feed our loved ones. A shoe brings balance to our lives. Within a teheiru, within a worship place, 
we don't uh, waste food. We don't waste food in our kitchens. Nothing is thrown away. Um, the preparations that are offered to the deities, they come back to nature, they decompose naturally, and they feed life on Earth. And often, uh, some grains that come back to the Earth through the work of Ebo, they become urban gardens, they grow and strive and um, produce more food. So we see a circle there. Uh, so terreiros, worship places, have a very important function because terreiros feed up the uh, local economies, terreiros, so worship places. We have the uh, production of uh, crafts. It is a place for a holistic education, of an integral education. Once you get into the tejero, you are able to have contact to knowledges, oral knowledges. They come from aquadas, from our elders, from people that have lived before us. Everything that we do today is not something that we have not invented the wheel. We are doing things that have been uh, passed on to us. So we have a mission. We have to give continuity or to keep on doing what we learn from our elders. Up until uh, recent, Candomblé, a religion, a, an African religion, was completely um, matriarchal. And thank to, thanks to these ladies, uh, much of the knowledge was preserved and passed on to others. Today we have babalorishais, so um, men that are priests, and they keep these knowledges and pass them on to others. These knowledges are exchanged um, in the presence of women and they're being passed on. So our religion is a religion in which there is knowledge sharing, there is um, content sharing, and we educate. We teach our own. People of Candomblé know to go in and out of places because they know how to value nature. They know uh, what the elders represent. They know what women represent. So it is very important that these knowledges um, be passed on to our children, to our grandchildren, and that this type of knowledge does not get carried away um, by time. So I would like to close my uh, my talk uh, by thanking Leonardo, Sepir, the City Hall of Rio de Janeiro, I would like to thank for the opportunity of sharing our culture, our religion, um, so that our culture and our religion expands and reaches out to the world. We have rare opportunities to do that. And we're very fortunate to be here right now, having the opportunities to show what we are, that we are of a religion that uh, praises the good. Ashe to all of you. I would like to thank on behalf of CEPIR, on behalf of the uh, Rio de Janeiro C municipal government, the presence of all of you in this round table. Please continue to believe keep on believing for those that are here watching uh, because this is an anti-racist uh, municipal government and we'll always place these people in the stage of an international event held in this city, the city that has one of the largest concentrations of tejeros, of these uh, worship places. So with the Eduardo Pais mayor, you can count on us. Ashe to all of you. Okay, to close this 
round table, we must listen to the conga drums, right? I uh, will invite Olga Zuka to present to us this song from the uh, African traditions. The panel can stay here while he plays. Bem, como nós falamos aqui, eu falei sobre comida, nós fomos em Since I, we talked about food, I talked about food here. He's going to play the beat that he wishes, only the sound, or he can sing as well a song, an Umbanda song on our old black one, our great ancestors, the Petro Velhos, the uh, our ancestor the left is um, tradition. It's so important to this forum, this forum on food. De sol a sol, lá na fazenda do Senhor, ainda era cativado e hoje tá, graças a Deus, o cativeiro se acabou. Hoje tá, graças a Deus, o cativeiro se acabou. Hoje tá, graças a Deus, o cativeiro se acabou. Enquanto os brancos sorriam, o preto Enquanto os brancos sorria, os pretos choravam lágrima de dor. Eu trabalhava de sol a sol, lá na fazenda do Senhor. Ainda era um cativeiro, hoje dou, graças a Deus, cativeiro se acabou. Hoje dou, graças a Deus, cativeiro se acabou. Hoje dou, graças a Deus, cativeiro se acabou. Cativeiro se acabou hoje, dá graças a Deus. Cativeiro se acabou. Tá bom, meu amor. Tá bom? Tá bom. Obrigado pela presença de todos. A gente... Thank you all for your presence here. We are very late. And thank you all. Axé to all of you on behalf of CEPIR. Thank you. Sentado em pé.